Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at an Aurora pen. I think it's only the second Aurora pen I've been reviewing so far. First one being the Aurora Duo card. This one here is the Aurora 88 Big. There's also like a slightly smaller version of it. This here is the big version. Before we hop right into things, let me thank Thank very much uh, my friend Joost at appelboompennen.com in the Netherlands for uh, having this pen here shipped to me so that I can review it for all of you out there. Thanks Joost, much appreciated. Let's start with a brutally massive box. Uh, has a reddish outer cardboard sleeve saying Aurora, proud to celebrate our first 100 years 1919 to 2019. Um, this here is the 88 big as said, uh, I think that labeling is wrong. It says fine nib and it says also chrome cap and resin barrel. Uh, this here has actually a medium nib and uh, it has a resin cap as well as you see, but the 88 big it still is with a chrome trim. You slide out a black cardboard box right here. Looks like that. Lift off that cap. Out comes another black box, also pretty huge, uh, opens up like this, says Aurora, very very nicely packaged, uh, 14k solid gold nib, uh, and then inside you have a small booklet, you know, with a little bit of history and filling instructions and uh, information about the nib and uh, you know how wide this writes and in which sizes it's available and so on overall nice packaging i would say it's like a pretty massive packaging for basically you know there's nothing inside if there would be like sort of like a box little spot to, to to have an ink bottle and so on i would get why you need to have such a large box that's basically a large box with nothing inside not sure uh, how meaningful that is. Anyway, this is the pen. Let's look at the pen. The 88 large or big chrome trim. Very beautiful pen. I mean, the design is a cigar shaped design, very rounded edges and so on. Uh, it's designed by an Italian designer and uh, industrial designer and architect called uh, I think Marcello Nizzoli is his name or was his name because he designed that pen or uh, in the 1950s and Aurora has now sort of like revived that design and I think it's a very beautiful you know 1950-1960-ish design you know with a little bit of fantasy uh, you can see sort of like similarities to the round curves of you know the Piaggio Vespa uh, sort of like small motorbike and so on so I think it's a very very nice design if you look at it very quickly and you're not very familiar with fountain pens it could also look a little bit like a Platinum Century or a Sailor 1911 large or a Mont Blanc 146 or something like that you know very classy design can't really go wrong with a good old cigar shape let's have a look at the pen sort of like from top to bottom and right here at the top of the pen we sort of like don't have a finial or anything it's just like a very nice rounded cap right here looking a little bit like sort of like helmet ish then you have like a very beautiful teardrop shape reminds me a little bit of some of the pilot clips uh, very very nice very usable clip slides very easily into a uh, shirt pocket or pen pouch we have a center band here saying aurora that's basically it and then we have a, a barrel that does taper down we have like a small uh, silver ring right here and then we have an end cap and that is actually the piston turning knob because this is a piston filler um, the pen is rather girthy, which is very, very nice. I really like the girth and the size of this pen. One thing I noticed straight away when I got the pen, took the pen out of the box and held it in, in, in my hand, is that it's extremely lightweight. Um, I would have expected this pen to be a lot heavier when I saw it. I mean, it's all resin, so it's not heavy material, but this pen really is a featherweight, very, very lightweight pen. So if you do like larger pens, but you don't like heavy pens, if you want a large, girthy, lightweight pen, then this really is the pen for you. Next thing I really like about this pen is that it uncaps really fast. One and a quarter turns, something like that. 
uncaps really really fast makes it a soup and then obviously if you sort of like twist uh, with both hands it goes super super quick to get the cap off that's very nice because obviously it makes the pen a very quick and very useful note taker in that sense you see the pen has a beautiful size i don't have the smallest hands on the planet i pointed out in almost every review the pelican m800 lamy 2000 sort of like uh, mont blanc 146 being the perfect pen size for me and this pen indeed lays in my hand very very well it's a very well balanced pen but you know there's not a lot to balance right here because like it's so lightweight but even then of course you need to get the weight distribution right and aurora sort of hit the nail on the head with that one fantastic lays really nicely uh in the hand and i think you can see the very long section we'll get into that in a second you see the nice large number six size nib which is very beautiful at the aesthetics and proportion sort of like nib to body ratio very nicely here we have the cap uh, with a small inner cap to prevent the nib from drying out i never had that nib dried out when capped and i had it capped for two weeks at times um, uh, without using it very nice you can post the pen uh, posts very nicely fairly deep down onto the barrel not extremely deep not halfway down the barrel but like a good bit onto the barrel and since it's also a resin cap uh, it's very very nicely balanced i mean the cardboard box set that it's like the the chrome cap um hinting towards this pen is also available with like sort of like a striped metal chrome cap which is very very beautiful um and having the pen in my hand right now i could actually imagine that because the pen is so lightweight that a chrome cap may actually when posted throw the balance off quite a bit but that one here as said very nicely balanced writes writes very nicely posted no problem at all but there's no need for posting that pen for me really because like as you see the size is is a really good size right let's look at the nib very beautiful um number six size nib it's rhodium plated uh 14k gold 585 saying aurora down there has a lot of beautiful beautiful scroll work right here on the nib very very beautiful i think it's one of the most beautiful nib designs i like the le the long nib the wide nib shoulders very nicely we have a feet down there then it says down here on the feet it says m4 medium that's where aurora has their nib designations on the 88 the nib designation isn't to be found on the nib it's to be found down there on the feet we then have like a very long section, very, very nicely. I, I think a lot of people will like this section because it's actually very easy to find your grip right here because it's a tapering, a tapering section. It's a bit thicker up here, gets thinner and thinner as you go down towards the nib and then flares out down here very smoothly, very softly, which is actually fantastic because it's next to impossible. Uh, for your hands to slide onto the nib and as said this long section and actually not sharp threads at all very very smooth threads this like sort of the, the most non-sharp threads if, if there's something like that uh, a word like that exists that i have ever felt so this is actually really really nice uh, so you're definitely going to find your grip here and i actually find the it's i mean it's next to perfect it's it's really good um, you have like a beautiful ink window right here with like two small silver rings that show you the ink level. I think I have Pelican 4001 Black in there. And uh, yeah, that's sort of it. Um, the pen is very low on ink at the moment. It may even be starting up dry when I do the writing sample. I let the ink level drop that low on purpose because that pen has a very interesting feature that I want to show you right here. Um, I think... If you look closely in the middle in the center of the barrel you can see a small black nipple standing or sticking out right here that nipple is actually the nipple that sits on the feet right and the interesting thing with this piston mechanism is that you can envision this piston mechanism it's like sort of like a plastic seal and that plastic seal has a little dent in the middle a little hole uh, and what this little hole does it's sort of like uh, so I mean, you have like sort of like the gasket like this with that little hole inside and that little hole inside serves as an extra ink reservoir uh, i've never tried that i'm gonna try that live with you right here now 
Um, so what that is supposed to do um, is that when the ink level drops very low and you're like, oh, you forgot to refill the pen, you would uh, uh, screw down that piston, that uh, piston gasket with that small hole would sort of like push onto that nipple and that nipple will then sort of like expel the rest of the ink or, or, or sort of like take in that rest of the ink and that should give you enough ink to, according to Aurora, still write a page or two. So it's a very nice sort of like, you know, reservoir spare, uh, almost like a spare petrol in, 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 in the car. Uh, actually very, very nice. We're going to try that out together in a second and see if that works. Let's do a quick size comparison to my standard size reference pen, Alami Safari. And I think it's fair to say that the Aurora 88 is slightly shorter. Um, let's do a size comparison when they are uncapped. And I guess it's fair to say that then uncapped, they're pretty much the same length, which means that like sort of a very efficient cap going down pretty deeply onto the barrel uh, nib size comparison and you see that it's actually a, like a very decently sized nib and you also see the section diameter comparison a little bit. Let me also do a quick comparison to a more blow 146 because I think the pens are fairly similar in size and also similar in price range and I could imagine that you know if you enjoy a more blow 146 you might and you maybe also already own one you might also enjoy this Aurora pen because they're fairly similar. Some people call that Aurora a more blow 146 killer and it's, you know, I mean, it is a fantastic pen. It's a little bit shorter than the 46. When capped and when uncapped. Uh, it's uh, a little bit longer than uh, 146. Uh, compare the nibs. Uh, the Aurora nib is slightly longer. I just shield off the light here a little bit so you can see that. And then the section, I would say depending on where you grip the pen, it's either fairly comparable or a little bit narrower, right? So there you have this. And uh, then let's now hop to a writing sample. I mean, what I can already say uh, is that Aurora has very, very spectacular nibs. They're very well known for having fantastic nibs and their nibs are a little bit like sailor nibs when it comes to feedback. They are pretty feedbacky nibs and uh, even so this one here. This one here is a medium nib, but it's a fairly, uh, fairly fine medium nib. It's a very fine writing nib. Uh, but it does have this like Aurora characteristic feedback. And if you're not familiar with Aurora feedback, you know, think Sailor uh, feels uh, very, very similar to, to uh, what a Sailor nib would feel like. Let's see. You see, so the pen is pretty dry at the moment because the ink level is actually really, really low. And what I'm now going to do is like I'm going to screw down the piston mechanism onto this nipple. So you see it coming onto it right here. Obviously you can't see the hole in the middle and that nipple going on because that happens inside the pen. But if you Google around a little bit, uh, you will see of sort of uh, schematic sketches of how that works. And uh, you see right now the pen actually that works does have a lot more juice than what we had up here. Um, so that mechanism seems to work. Let's do a writing sample. Aurora 88, big chrome trim, medium nib. And I don't know if you hear the feedback when writing, maybe I'll zoom in even a little bit more. Uh, this is very smooth paper, the Rodia paper but you can still sort of like feel and probably also hear that feedback. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very fantastic writing pen. Um, it writes a pretty, pretty fine line for being a medium. And it's actually also a very wet writing nib that I also have to say. I mean, Pelican 4001 Black is one of the driest inks out there. And out of this medium, which is a fine writing medium, you actually get a, uh, you know, 
pretty, pretty thin, fine line. Uh, time to refill for that one. Uh, last but not least, we need to talk price real quick. Uh, the pen costs around 500 euro, which I think, I mean, like it's one of Aurora's flagship pens. I think it's all right. You know, price-wise, you find yourself smack in the middle, somewhere in between a Pelican M800 and a Moblo 146. I think the 146 is 50 euro more expensive. The M800 is 50 euro less expensive. So I think price, you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, totally fine. Uh, fantastic writing pen, beautiful build construction, beautiful design. Uh, I personally really like this pen. There's not a lot to not like about it. Hope this review was useful. Thanks very, very much again to Joost at appleboompennen.com in the Netherlands for having this pen with me so that I could review it. And I'll see all of you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.